Hi, good morning. I'm Jai Masi from Himalayan Kingdom of Nepal. I am Pastor Sam once again. As uh, some of you have uh, uh, followed my message last time, which I was speaking about the seven key points for the prosperous and the peace to be a Christian life. So today, once again, I'm here to speak to all of you from the Word of God. And I'm going to just read the text for today's. It's uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 1 to 11. I would like to read all uh, to for you. And here it says, <coughs> Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not a tedious, but for you it is the same. Beer of the dogs and beer of the evil walkers, beer of all the multi, multi tension. For we are the circumcisions and who worship God in the spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I also might have a confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so circumcise the eight days of the stock of the Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the laws of the Pharisees, or concerning the zeal or persecuted the church, concerning the righteousness, which is in the law and blameless. But what things were gained to me, this I have uh, counted loss for Christ. And indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have uh, suffered the loss of all things and the count them as the rubbish that I may gain Christ. Verse 9, And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, and but that which is the true faith, Christ and the righteousness which is the from God by faith. And I may know him and the power of his uh, resurrections and the fellowship of the, his suffering being confronted to this day. If by any means I may attend to the resurrections from the dead. So, this is the word of God this morning for you. As I was just uh, talking and I was just, you know, um, thinking and I was just studying this uh, passage or just to, you know, the Paul was writing to the church of Philippians and uh, Philippi and the Philippians were the uh, very much, you know, they were very much uh, kind of, uh, I mean, confused sometimes and they were a lot of things that uh, went there and they were just not to see it. So the title of this uh, you know the uh, passage this morning I'm just I'm giving that it is the knowing the Lord fully. So why Paul is saying knowing the Lord fully so when we just read that and this uh, you know the easily that our letter was written by the paul epistle paul and uh, it was like uh, ad 62 and that was a uh, written and uh, we see and there are uh, chapter one it describes the joy in the suffering you know uh, so and we say joy in the suffering uh, through the suffering himself, you know. So, and the second chapter 2 says the joy in the suffering. It means that is kind of a, you know, the scenario we see. And chapter 3 also talks joy in the faith. And chapter 4 talks joy in the giving. So, this chap, this uh, uh, epistle 
has the separate or different kind of a, you know uh, the uh, category or they are put into different uh, the titles. So generally we know that and it is from chapter 3 I am just talking chapter 3 verse 1 to 11 it talks uh, about this uh, you know rejoicing in the Lord that is a man rejoicing with uh, the Lord or joy and that's a key verse is like a 12 to 14 we see and here we see like a verse 12 if you can just to see and what it says and it says verse 12 it says not that I have already attained or I am am I already perfect but I praise on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. So that's, uh, you know, and even verse uh, 13 talks, uh, Brethren, I do not uh, count myself to have, uh, you know, apprehended, but one thing that I do, forgetting those things which are behind and uh, reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upwarded call of God in the Christ Jesus. Wow, that is the great things. So it says rejoicing in the Lord. You know, it means that he says that's a key. You know, words we see, or even like uh, he says, like uh, knowing the Lord fully. What does it mean? This means this apostle has a very deeper, you know, the meaning on that. And it says, like even we say, Apostle Paul tells us uh, the seven great uh, aspiration which had all of our, which uh, center in the person of Lord Jesus Christ. Or like uh, this, earns longing to earn, you know, to longing. And we should uh, characterize every Christian's other, you know, progressively. So, Paul has the knowing the Lord. It says, there are so many things like, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, just to see, knowing, it, he says, know him. Like, uh, know him means what? It says, like, uh, even uh, verse 10, it talks like, uh, you know, and it says, uh, know him means, uh, Verse 10, like, let, 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 let me read out for you. And what it says, and it says, you know, and that I may know him and the power of his resurrections. What we must know. So, it says like a power of a resurrections. And even that's a, even the other one, it says to win him. It, to win him, it means to, you know, he has a power and he wins everything. And it's, it says, it, I, Indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowing, knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of, it says, loss of all things and count them as a rubbish that I may gain Christ. See? To win him and and to you know magnify to magnify. So he said magnify. It means to magnify him. It means like a, he is the great God and he knows everything. So what it says, it says like to magnify him. Even verse chapter 1, verse 20, it talks uh, you know, it says, according to my own expectations and the hope that in the nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness, as uh, always to know all the Christ will be magnified in my body, where, whether by life or by death. You know, so. And it says to magnify, and the, the other one says to be found in him. 
you know, like uh, we all the Christians must know that we are found in him. In him means what? He has the, you know, the great things. Even verse 9 talks about that. Uh, and be found in him, not uh, having my own righteousness, which is the from the law, but that which is the true faith in Jesus Christ, a righteousness which is from God by faith. You know, so to be found in him, that means we have a faith in him, that we are really saved in him. And to attend unto the, you know, the first resurrections and be with him. So there are several words to knowing the Lord fully. That's several things we, uh, we can just, uh, you know, um, tell and we can just, uh, uh, you know, explain. But what a Paul is saying here, and he has the uh, knowing those lot of things as we Christians must know God personally. You know, that is a very important. So Paul is saying like uh, here, circumstances we have like a Paul. Even Paul, he says himself, he was the one of the a guy from the Jewish background and he was circumcised on the eight days and uh, he really he is the from uh, you know Israelites or he is uh, from Jewish uh, clients and and even to to boast himself and he has got a lot of things you know and he could have boast and even he's uh, from Benjamin in a tribe so on there are so many things that uh, Paul is mentioning here eight and he says I have put all things behind him and to, to know God and to focus in his personal or to focus in him. So here we know that to knowing him, that means one of the things we must knowing his personal or knowing his persons and who is, uh, you know, that he said that I may know him and all vital Christian experience begins when we come to know not only about the Lord, but when we come to know him personally. Okay, that is the main things we, we just know. That's what I told you here, like uh, knowing his person, knowing his persons. Christ is a person as even he is a human uh, you know, he was born and brought up and uh, he was in the world and he has a, he did a lot of things as a human and with the power of a Holy Spirit. But uh, here we see and like uh, many times we have a lot of experience to know Christ or the knowing God. But we don't know his personality and uh, we don't know him personally. That's what even the multitude of people who know him are the, in the same you know, position that, uh, you know, he was the great Messiah and he was the great, uh, you know, the man that come on the earth. And even some people had a view about Jesus like, uh, you know, he was a, uh, you know, the miraculous guy and he performs a lot of miracles. So people knew about him, but people don't know, uh, you know, him as a personally. So, and he did uh, so many things. And they were just a follow, they were just a fan on that, but uh, people never know God as a personal. Even we know that even, you know, like a Samuel, you know, and like a Nicodemus, and even like a Nicodemus came to the Christ, and, uh, you know, and he was just uh, believing the Messiah, and the Christ can do the, so many things. So even uh, John 3, even uh, 3, uh, even Lord Jesus said, Unless you are born again, you cannot get into the kingdom of God. That means what? It, it means that uh, personally to knowing Lord, it mentioned there. So even Nicodemus was confused. And because he, say, he thought like, uh, I am a, a guy who knows everything. I know every, all the scriptures and I have been following all the, you know, uh, the, the commandment of God. And I, I am serving him and I know him. 
And even Jesus told, unless you are born again, you cannot get into the kingdom of God. That means and he was just confused. And he said, Lord, I am a very big or I am old man. How can I get into my womb again? You know, and then I can be born. And the Lord says, no, the one who born in his spirit is a, a spirit. You know, that's it. So here we see the Lord is saying, the Jesus was a man saying to even to Nicodemus. And uh, you know, many times he didn't know the Christ personally. So here we know that and knowing him fully, that is uh, number one, we must knowing him persons. You know, knowing him in person. So his persons, we must know that he is in persons, but he is a God. And we have to know him personally. So even there are many Bible verses we can find, even it mentions like uh, even 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 12 also, and that's uh, there are so many things, uh, you know, and we know that in the apostle saying, I know whom I have believed in him. I know whom, you know, I have a faith. So I know him and to know God and the, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the salvations or the he's a salvation givers and even john 17 3 it also talks uh, you know he's uh, like uh, we know him and we you know many times we have a lot of things that in our minds that uh, we never you know experience so so there are many bible verses we can find and uh, and even like uh, uh, we just uh, go further more and we find so you can just note that and you can read even the, your home so i can just give you bible verses to, up to the bible verses and you can read and uh, you know go even john uh, 17 3 and even like uh, job 22 verse 21 and uh, even acts 9 3 to 6 uh, you know there are so many things uh, even a uh, philippians chapter 3 verse 10 and the uh, other you know and even John 49, there are even Hebrews 6, uh, 3 says, and look after we can just even 2 Peter 1, uh, 3, 18. So these are the Bible verse. It mentioned that we know the God or Jesus persons or personally. And that's uh, number one. The number two, and we can see. So knowing him fully, we must know his power. How much is a powerful God? Even that is a man says there, you know, I may know the power of his resurrections. Paul is talking, he is, you know, and he had overcome the dead. That means he had been resurrected. That means he has a power. The power of bring life, you know, power of you know, bring life from death to life. You know, he's got a power. And even he just, he was resurrected. So we know that that's a power. If there are so many things in the mention of the power. And even like a John chapter 19, verse 33 to 35 also talks, you know, power of a, a God or power of Jesus Christ. And after he's dead and he has a body, was a place in the tombs, you know, and there he has been rose again on the third day and the Bible mentions. And that was the same mighty power which, uh, you know, raised him from the dead. So the power of his resurrection is uh, available for all, you know, all for and may experience by the every Christian's people. So many times. We don't realize, matter of fact, like uh, we think we take very light. See, when we do, uh, do pray, when we pray, and we have a power, and when we are very weak sometimes, and we need to pray to God, that God, you give me the power. God, give me the, you know, the overcoming power that I may overcome by the sin, or I may just overcome uh, from the situations, that I may overcome the, uh, you know, from these uh, uh, circumstances. So these are the things like uh, the power. It is power, not the power of the, you know, outside of the world power. But it is the heavenly power, godly power. The power is being in, 
implanted in me a power within me the power has been you know activated by the holy spirit so that power i need and i must really pray to my god pray to jesus as a jesus has been rose from the dead and the power of god that's a divine power brought you know a dead to life so that is a power. Even today, we have the power. We have the same power. Even Jesus had a power. Even God has the power. And God has given the power to us. Even like uh, when we look at this, uh, you know, in even Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it talks, it talks like, uh, you know, when you receive the power of the Holy Spirit, you will have the boldness to witness my gospel or my message to the people of the world. And first, you go to Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria in the uttermost part of the world. See, that is the greatness. So that is a power that I have a power that I don't have any fearness. I have a uh, you know, power which uh, really creates the boldness. I have a bold and I am confident I am not afraid of anything. Even I am not afraid to the dead. Even Psalm 23 verse, uh, you know, it uh, talks of four verse, two of, I think, I guess uh, for verse 4 talks, uh, I may go through the valley of shadow of the dead and I am not a fear. I am not afraid because the Lord my God is with me. So that is the wonderful things, my friend. So knowing the, knowing the Lord fully means know his persons, know his power, that he is the powerful God in us. And his power enables us to overcome all the, from all the situation, overcome from all the sin, overcome from all the, you know, uh, this, uh, uh, obstacles that we are facing day to day in our life as we live. So, the thought number, you know, a thought I would like to mention to knowing uh, the Lord fully, we must know His patience. Patience means here He talks like uh, that I may know and the fellowship of His uh, suffering. You know, we know that Christ has been suffered for our sins. So, you know, and he suffered like uh, even, you know, to death. Even Philippians chapter 2, you know, it mentions when we just look that. And there mentions uh, Christ's suffering. So why he suffered? Because he suffered for our sin, to forgive our sin or the remuneration of our sins, you know. So, so that is the very very important we must know that and even that uh, bible talks even the you know the furthermore it says like uh, he has agony you know he was scorned and he was beaten he was just hang on the cross and it wasn't easy to bear it but that was a great agony that was a great you know passion you know that means as we are believer of christ we must know as to live life as suffering. You know, we have a patience. You know, the sometimes we are going through the suffering, we are going through the hardship, we are going through the so many things that uh, you know we are surrounded. And it is the because uh, you know comparing with the God's uh, suffering, it is nothing, my friend. Because when we think Jesus was suffer because when we think Jesus was taking great, uh, you know, the suffering or, you know, very heavy burden for uh, on behalf of us. So that is the very important. We, when we think that it's not. And he was caught on the, he was crucified. You know, the, you know, passion of cross or the suffering of cross wasn't that easy. That what we think, but it was a very heavy loaded. It was a very, very, you know, very, very, very much a, a suffering or the hardship that ever he faced. 
So, and he was even like uh, we know that you know, you know, before he was facing that uh, suffering and he went to the you know, garden of Gethsemane and he was praying. And he was praying to God literally and even we know he had a very agony and he was praying to God and while he was praying even his, uh, you know, his uh, sweat it was torn into the blood that was a deep down in his heart. It was a heavy burden. It was a heavy suffering that ever Jesus had uh, experienced or expressed. So that's what he went through that and we know that. So today we must know that and only then we can know God or Christ fully. So we as a believer have to go through the suffering and have to face all the suffering and the, you know hardship persecutions you know scouting people they may, may say so many things to us so we have to uh, ready for that so once we know that and really how much christ suffer how much lord bear you know all the hardship so because of for our forgiveness of our sin because on behalf of us and because he loves us because he wants us to you know to be his children so therefore he didn't care himself but he gave up he gave himself for us so we must know that knowing his patience number three number four it says knowing his purpose bible talks being made con yeah, it says being made confirmations or confirmation or his date or he knows the god purpose for the every believers in a, you know in a set time like a roman chapter 8 verse 28 to 29 uh, like let let me read that i think that will be more clear for you and it takes romans uh, 8 chapter 8 verse 20 you know 28 to 29 it talks let me read here 26 28 it talks and we know that all things works together for good for those who love God to those who are the call according to his purpose and 29 that's for whom he for new and he also predestined to be conform confronted to the image of the his son that he might be the firstborn and among many brothers you know so that is the main thing 28 talks we know his we are being born according to his purpose so here purpose what god has a purpose for us he wants us to be you know disciples he wants us to be just a follower of his will, you know. And he wants us to just to, you know, share his burden or his uh, suffering to the people that uh, they are looking for uh, uh, peace and joy. And so that is the purpose. So we must know why God has called me, why God has, uh, you know, uh, called Jesus or God, the Jesus, God sent Jesus on the earth because to suffer and to shed his blood on the cross and to forgive our sin and to assure us the salvations and also he led us to be a child of God so these are the things that he he did it so today what is what am I here why my you know responsibility what is those things we must know that and that's my purpose to being on the earth so we must know that even the bible talks so many places even like uh, 
you know, Romans 6, verse 2 and 3 and 4, and even 5 and 6 also talks. And uh, even there, we can just uh, read that, uh, some of the Bible verses uh, that I would like to read, uh, you know, and uh, how shall we who died to sin live uh, any longer in it? So, 3 says, or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into the Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? So, even verse 4 and 5, we continue if you go and you see. Therefore, we were the buried with him through baptism into that, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So, the purpose of God, you know, we have to know that we are being created in his image and we are new creations the, our identity what is our our identity in christ you know we must know that we have the ministry god has entrusted us to reconciliations to the people between the people and god and we are the ambassador of Christ that uh, to bring the, you know, joy, bring the, keep the peace and harmony among the people. So this is our responsibility as we are the gospel, you know, sharer. We are the gospel, you know, courier and we must share the gospel. So this is the what God purpose we must know that. So that's why he has come and even he has done his uh, you know his uh, responsibility or his duty that God has uh, put in on him. So so even he didn't deny that. You know the purpose of Christ was sent by God he, he exactly he knew. So today same way we must also know why God has called me. What am I here? Why am I here and what is my purpose being here and to just to, you know, and to live in a, you know, in a Christian life. So we must know that. So this is once we know that really and God is going to bless. So that's how we can know our Lord fully. So this is the, what I would like to tell you. Even I would like to uh, exalt you all the people. And as you've been listening, because uh, sometimes and we do not uh, know, uh, you know, so many things. But uh, we have to just to, you know, be aware of that. What is the main, you know, cause to follow God, to follow Christ? So here I said like a thought on the, on the fourth, you know, fourth point is knowing his purpose. So on that, and even Lord knew his being on the earth. And his responsibility and his duty and uh, he was so loyal to God's commandment so that was his purpose and then he can really save the people from the sea and he can really bring people to the kingdom of God or make the people to children of God so that was the his purpose being coming on the earth, Jesus. So we must know that. And even like uh, on the faith, we know the, his promises. So the promises, in, he has got a promise. He said like even Mark chapter 13 verse 31, we say, so promise of God. So there are many places we find God has promised. So, you know, and he said, I will do this and you do that. And if you do that, I'll fulfill. That's a promise. And God even never, even like we say, even we uh, Deuteronomy uh, that, uh, you know, 28, uh, the whole chapter talks about the promise that God is giving the blessing. And he is saying, if you obey me, I'll bless you. If you be faithful, I'll prosper you. See, there are so many places that God has 
promises. So there, my friend, therefore, my friend, today, I would like to tell you the knowing Christ fully, number one, so knowing his persons, number two, knowing his power, number three, knowing his patience, number four, knowing his purpose, number five, knowing his promises. So these are the things I would like to just to mention you. And finally, really, as we are the follower of Christ or the children of God, we must know how we can really knowing him fully, his fullness, you know. So as I, would, uh, I have really, uh, you know, struck one of the things as on the, on the uh, you know, the third point, like uh, knowing his passions. Passions or the suffering. Why Christ, Christ has been suffered? You know, and even he was suffered even to the dead. To the dead, my friend. You know, and he, he didn't have any choice. He could have a, you know, he could have a, uh, you know, uh, take the some choices. He could have, but he didn't. Because that was the compulsory for him. Because he was the, you know, he was the son of God. And God had given him a responsibility. Only himself can bring people to reconcile people with the God. Because sinning on the blood on the cross. Because the blood of cross was the precious. That was the very, very important to reconcile people between God. So that's what we have to know that. That's why today let's be serious in our Christian journey, my friend. So, we as the believer must be, must be a faithful child of God. Must, you know, share his gospel. We have to be a really sincere. So, if we are not uh, sincere in our responsibility or our duty or God's commandment or God's uh, commissions, then how can we reach out? There are many hundreds and hundreds, uh, thousands and thousands, and even like uh, millions and millions of people are not at here. They are seeing the gospel, or they, they didn't ha uh, have a chance to hear the gospel. So, even the Bible talks if I don't see, who is going to see? If I don't go, who is going to go? So, my friend, here, as we are the you know, children of God, so we are the you know, believers, we must have this strong convictions that we know Christ fully, we know Lord fully. So we have to know him personally and we have to know his power and we have to, you know, incline with his uh, passions, with his suffering. And we must know, we must follow his purpose. We must know the, our purpose as a being of believers. And there is a promise of God. The promise of God will always hold up, will always encourage us, will always bless us. There is a blessing. Once we know him personally, once we know his power, once we know his patience, once, once we know his purpose, and then there is a Promise is the blessing. And promise is the victory. Promise is the joy. So that's what Paul is saying and he knew everything. That's what he's uh, mentioning this thing. So today I would like to pray for you as you living in the world. And we know that we may have a lot of problems that we are going through. Uh, but I would like to pray for you, my friend. God is going to bless you. God is going to give you freedom. God is going to really, uh, you know, bring your lot of success in your life. So that is the main thing. So I would like to pray for you. If you want to just to uh, mean on and if you want to really 
uh, focus on that and uh, you have a problem then I would like to just pray for you just you can just close your eyes and you can just feel it father I would like to thank you and praise you you are the great and mighty God there is a nothing impossible in you everything is possible once your children are begging and praying and you have a promise that I'm gonna bless you and even the devil the, is a uh, stronger even devil is there to really uh, suppress us but i just pray in the name of jesus to get free and lord set free us from the devil power thank you thank you father thank you you are great and mighty god lord you bless us let us to live a good as a follower of christ and give us the strength that we may overcome from all the strategy and all the Satan power, Father bless us. Thank you for everything. All the glory and honor we give you. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.